Hi guys, I am so excited that I get to be teaching you this Junker Tour Masterclass. I am, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Hannah Moore Jackson. I am an Irish fashion designer. Um, I've currently just started my own brand, which is all about tie-dye and colour, hence the jumper that I'm wearing. But what I want to show you today is all about mark making, creating your own prints and patterns, and it's something that will be just that kind of like extra added flair that you can use within your designs um, and you can make it really fun and creative and just make it your own and I think it will really help you stand out in front of the judges and it's also going to be really fun and exciting for you guys to try. So before I get into it I'm just going to show you what kind of um, materials I'm going to be using but just so you know you can make like print baking, mark making out of absolutely anything like the world is your oyster, think outside the box, and um, you can do it with anything, but I'm just gonna give you that kind of inspiration to show you what kind of materials that you can use. So today I'm gonna be showing you just on a normal piece of um, white fabric. This is just an old pillowcase that I have. I'm gonna be using some um, fabric paints, fabric markers, but you can do this with natural dye, which is something that I will talk to you about in another masterclass further down the line, which will be really exciting as well. But for now, this is what I'm gonna use. Or you can even use <clears throat> paints that you have in school or at home because obviously the garments that you guys are making, you won't be washing them, so that's totally fine. Um, and then other bits that I'm gonna be using um, is some leftover lace fabric remnants that I have. I'm gonna be using some shells that I have because I live by the beach, so I can uh, get these um, when I do my morning walks. And then I'm going to be using some leaves and some flowers and some berries. So just stay tuned and I'll show you exactly how to achieve this. Okay, so the first one that I'm going to do are the leaves. So as you guys know, there's absolutely beautiful texture in leaves anyway. So we can utilize the texture that they have in their natural um, composition and we can use that as a print and we can make placement prints or AOP prints. Totally up to you, whatever you think you would prefer your garment to have. So what I'm going to do, these are all kind of wet and stuff like that, so I have to let them dry a little bit. But I'm just gonna get an old container. I'm going to pick my colors. So I'm gonna use this violet purple, and then I'm gonna use this cherry rose. And what I'm going to do is just put out a little bit of my paint into my container. You won't need too much of this now. So now that I have my paint, I'm going to have my paintbrush as well. And I'm going to just make a nice area here. So if you put some plastic down, this will help you to not make too much of a mess. And I'm going to get my leaves as dry as possible if you can. And we're just gonna utilize the um, lines on the back and just lay them out as flat as you can. Now that we have the leaves prepped, we are going to go into our colors, whatever color you want. You can do a mix and match of colors. Totally up to you, this is the fun part because it's super creative. And we're just gonna go in and paint the back of the leaves. Okay, so now that I've painted the back of the leaves, this is what they should look like. So I have my purple one here and then my pink one here. So I'm just gonna wipe down my surface and then I'm gonna lay down my um, pillow. Okay, so now I'm gonna lay my piece of fabric or whatever you guys are using flat on a surface. Again, still try to keep the plastic underneath it because it is messy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out where I want my leaves to go so I'm just going to put them here at the top now really lightly you don't have to press anything just yet just make sure that you're getting the right placement of where you want your leaves to go okay so now that I have them placed down here make sure you guys can see that I've placed them just up here in the corner I'm going to get something that is heavy so I just have a wooden chopping board and I'm going to lay it on top and press as hard as I can down where I have the placement of the leaves. 
So after you've pressed your leaves, you're going to lift them up really, really gently. Just because they can crumble onto your fabric, which we don't want. So there's one. And then here is the other one. Amazing. So now you can see all of that gorgeous texture from the leaves has transferred onto your material. And what's great about this is that you can use the leaves again until they crumble or you can use additional leaves and you can layer the prints on top of each other. So you can get like an abstract um, linear look, you can get a foliage inspired print, whatever you want. You can use as little colour as you want or as much colour as you want, it is totally up to you. And the best thing about it is that the leaves can be found all around you. So that is print inspiration one. Okay, so the next one is getting your intricate kind of fabric re fabric remnants and you're going to lay it down on your piece of fabric right side up. And what you're going to do is you're just going to get some masking tape and you're going to secure the edges of this fabric because we don't want it to move around when we are putting our paint into it. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to secure the fabric down with some tape, like I said. Okay, so now that that is secure, we're gonna go back in with our paints. So this time I'm gonna choose the green paint. And you're gonna use a sponge because you just want it to be dabbed onto the surface of the fabric. But you can use your paintbrush just to coat the sponge if you would like, if that's the easiest thing. So now that we've coated our sponge, we're just going to dab the sponge very lightly onto the fabric. So once you've finished dabbing the lace down with your sponge, you're going to lift up the sellotape that was keeping it in place. I actually went back in after I did the green and I went back in with black on the other side just to see because the green was quite light so you may not see it but it's all about trial and error so these this is why you do these fabric trials before you go into your real garment but as you'll be able to see now the black worked so much better than the green did because the green was actually quite light so here is the mark making that the lace made. As you can see, the black is so much more prominent, which is what we want to go for unless you want that minimal look. So that is another way that you can transfer your textures onto your garment. Now we're going to go into the third inspiration for pattern marking. So the next pattern slash mark making that we're going to be doing is going to be with some berries and then some flowers. So make sure that you get darker flowers because these will be most likely to transfer onto your um, fabric. So I'm just going to take apart the flower so that they're, they're all individual. So now that I have that, I have three individual flowers. I'm going to place them down on the right side of the fabric. And then we're going to do what we did with the lace. We're going to um, we're going to use some salad tape to keep them in place. So now that I have those flowers stuck down, as you can see here, I'm now going to take some of the berries just off so they're all separate. And I'm just going to place them around again, just putting some salad tape over it so they stay in place. So then when you have the berries stuck down as well, you're going to get a wooden surface. So I'm bringing back my chopping board and you're going to place, oh, sorry. You're going to place the flowers that you stuck down downwards. So this will be the wrong side facing up. And then what you're going to do is you're just gonna get a hammer and lightly tap away at where you have the berries and the flowers. And then as you can see, you'll be able to start to see the flowers come through when you're banging on them. So then once you have done that, you're going to turn it back over. Move away your surface area that you've been working on. And you're just going to lift up. Oh, sorry. You're going to lift up 
the sellotape then that you've had to keep the flowers in place. This is what you are left with. Beautiful flower and berry transfer. So again, this is something that you can build up. You can layer things on top of it. You can mix and match with the colors. You can add some brighter, bolder colors and you can even mix back in with the with the leaf print that we've done here. So this is what you get from that flower print making. Now onto our final mark making. Okay, so now we're going to go in with some shell transfers. So again, we're going back to our paints that we had. We're gonna choose whatever color that we like. I'm actually gonna go with a blue this time. So opening up my blue. Taking my paintbrush again, going in, and I'm just going to paint it onto the shell. So once we've painted on them with our shell, we are going to go onto our fabric. We are going to go in a more of a seesaw motion, just because it's obviously a round surface, to get the fab or to get the paint from the bottom of it all the way to the top. So you're going to do that a few times and you're just going to make like a different kind of placement each time. Just make sure that when you are doing it that you're cleaning your surface if you're going to be changing colours. If you're not changing colours then work away. Another thing that you can do is you can get different scale, different sizes of the shells and then you can just again layer them over and you can only do, you can do kind of like the whole shell or you can just do parts of the shell that you want to transfer on. So I'm going to go in and do that now. Now that we've painted the shell, we're going to place it down. Okay, so I've actually layered up a few colours and a few different scales and sizes of the shells. And then this is how it turns out. So that is all of the things that you can do with like any kind of not like nature around you any type of remnant around you you can even do orange peels like the skin of that and you can transfer on that texture onto your garment you can do shells as i've shown you anything from outside it's just all about being creative thinking outside the box and um, layering things as well and just trial and error because if things go wrong things go wrong it's all about the process and it's a learning curve as well so I can't wait to see what you guys do. Definitely try it out at home or in school and don't be afraid to tag Joe Couture because I can't wait to see all of the creations. I'm so excited to see what you guys come up with this year. I'm always blown away about everything that you guys do. Like the concepts, the ideas is absolutely amazing. So I'm really looking forward to seeing whatever it is that you guys bring. So I'll be back to you um, with another masterclass soon that I'll be talking about all natural dyeing process. And I'm very excited to give you some tips and tricks and I hope that this helps you uh, think outside the box especially using prints and patterns and um, definitely just be as creative as you can so I will see you soon